What? Yo, you were just playing something in my car? In the middle of the busy metropolis that is New York City, a police officer arrested a citizen who was growing weed. Marijuana, more commonly referred to as weed, has been the subject of heated controversy all across the world. Citizens have been known to be busted red-handed on multiple occasions for engaging in criminal activities such as drug planting. They even risk being punished for their behavior. Elmer Pastrin and Kyle Erickson just caught one of them. When Elmer Pastrin and Kyle Erickson, two Staten Island police officers, are patrolling the borough on a typical day, they observe a BMW with tinted windows being driven by an individual who fails to indicate turns. They have no idea that this seemingly little run-in will reveal the extremes that some officers are ready to go to in order to make an arrest. As the officers got closer to the vehicle, they immediately became aware that they were dealing with four young black men. As the level of suspicion rises, backup is called for, and Officer Pastrun claims that he recognizes some of the passengers and that they are affiliated with a known neighborhood gang. I don't appreciate being lied to. I know this weed in the car, I smell it. In addition to this, the driver, La Sucuyate, has a history of being convicted of violence. To which she said, Wait, why are you searching me? Like, why are you touching me? No, I don't have nothing on me. Adding fuel to their already existing suspicions. The foundation has been laid for what is going to evolve into an engrossing story about power, corruption, and the fight for justice. Officer Erickson makes the decision to search the vehicle and the people inside of it, which appears to be prompted by the officer's own personal interests. While Erickson's camera inexplicably breaks and stops recording, the one worn by Pastrin continues to operate normally, allowing it to film the unfolding event. Erickson starts his search by concentrating on the passenger side of the vehicle and sending a curious stare towards the area of the vehicle's floor behind the rear seats. The situation seems to have cleared up quite a bit here. A twist that nobody saw coming occurs in the story. Erickson moves stealthily across the interior of the automobile as Pastrin's camera records his movements without his knowledge. Erickson is aware that his camera is not filming, so he uses discretion. It would indicate that Erickson tampered with anything that was located in the rear seat, although the precise nature of his activities is unknown at this time. In the meantime, the officers are engaged in conversation, and it would appear that they are oblivious to the growing dispute. Nah, we, we didn't find it, but he's bugging out, so I guess now it's going to be OGA, he's not letting us do our job, you know? Erickson is unaware that the owner of the automobile is recording his actions with a cell phone, and the footage shows the officer holding little plastic bags whose contents and purpose are unknown. Yo, you were just playing something in my car? Bro, step back. Excuse me. Step wait, back. hold on. Step back. Stand yo, back. he playing something in my car, yo. He playing something in my car. I, I'm not I'm not getting locked up. The driver, who is chained and has little control over the situation, is yet able to covertly capture the unfolding event. As the officer's actions are captured on camera, the officer may have accidentally revealed the dishonesty that may be at the core of this interaction. This places the truth in a precarious position. No, we weren't able to discover anything, but he's leaving, so I think everything is going to work out in the end. Do you realize that he is preventing us from doing our work? Pastran, who is devoted to his mission, continues his search while meticulously looking over the area on the rear level. However, despite the extensive investigation, the officers uncover no proof that any wrongdoing was committed. Erickson, in a fit of pique, climbs back into the trunk of the car, but he is oblivious to the fact that his camera has been reactivated. Foreign, who is unaware that his body camera is on, has watched an officer carefully put marijuana in the rear seat of a vehicle such that it appears to be legitimately there. Once again, his activities that he kept hidden from his partner have been captured, which casts additional doubt on the authenticity of the encounter. Alright, this was in the back seat on the floor. So, marijuana cigarette, sweat. Just had to put it out. Yo. I found a cigarette. Want, okay? It was lit when I found it on the floor. Yeah, that's why you're fucking out. Take them all. Huh? You wanna take them all? Thanks, mm -hmm. We only have it on hold. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So he, he's on the Yeah, but uh, any uh, narcotics in the car or anything? No, not weed. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Alright, listen, we found it. Okay? Okay. Good? Yeah. Okay. 
After then, the video takes us to the local police station, where we see the motorist being processed while being restrained in handcuffs. The two of them carry on a chat back and forth. Yo, so y'all just put me in my car, son. Bro, we did not do that. Why would we do He has a camera, I have a camera. my car. He has a camera, I have a camera. Why would we do that? Like I said, the minute we stopped you, everything's being recorded. So for him to do that, that'd be the dumbest thing ever. He'd lose his job over a dumb arrest like this. During the course of the search, it is very evident that the officer did not uncover any illegal items. On the other hand, Erickson, who is intent on defending his behavior, is said to have found a joint on the ground and claimed that it was lit and visible to everyone. All of the people who were in the automobile were taken into custody as a result of this alleged piece of evidence. As the legal proceedings progress, the driver finds himself in jail, where he is being held on charges of possessing marijuana. Officer Erickson testifies with conviction in front of the judge that he discovered the joint, so establishing that the driver and his accomplices were lawfully detained. The contradictory film that was obtained by the officer's body cams, however, takes front stage and casts doubt on the officer's assertions. As soon as the court becomes aware of the relevance of this persuasive evidence, he or she pauses Erickson's testimony. The judge is worried by the inconsistencies. Due to the gravity of the case, the police department is strongly encouraged to offer Erickson the assistance of legal representation. The evidence against the driver ultimately falls apart, and the charges of marijuana possession are dropped and the file is closed. This shocking change of events takes place. After evaluating the video evidence, the NYPD's internal investigators come to the conclusion that the officers did not engage in any misconduct. Officer Erickson chooses not to submit a statement, and Officer Pastran chooses to keep silent, both of which contribute to a sense of lingering doubt and unanswered issues regarding the actions of law enforcement officers. In the wake of this riveting narrative, the occurrence serves as a jarring reminder of the deeply ingrained problems that exist inside the system of criminal justice. While the discussion on whether or not marijuana should be legalized and the possible benefits of doing so continues, it is essential that society be aware of the negative effects that extensive weed plantation can have. When the cultivation of marijuana is prohibited in a region, the manufacturing and distribution of weed contribute to the development of a black market, which in turn encourages criminal activity. Marijuana plantations that are not authorized can attract members of organized crime, which can result in acts of violence, theft, and gang-related problems. It is possible for the presence of criminal elements to put the health and safety of otherwise law-abiding persons in jeopardy. The ease with which younger people can get their hands on marijuana as a result of its widespread cultivation can expose them to considerable risks. According to a number of studies, beginning marijuana usage at a younger age can have a negative impact on teenage brain development, which can then lead to problems with cognition and behavior. In addition, the use of marijuana has been connected to mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, and schizophrenia in particular among people who are genetically prone to developing these disorders. Please use the comment area to share your thoughts with us. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and press that subscribe button for more stuff that will warm your heart if you found the previous tale to be moving or thought-provoking. Let's make it a habit to work toward being folks in our communities who are compassionate and understanding at all times. We are grateful that you could join us today. Thank you very much for watching.